Hey nerds, I'm back. Today I've got three tanks, one tank again for you guys, and it's the Croissant Edition because I'm running all new French tanks. First game I've got obviously the 50 Bravo. Second game I've got the AMX CDC. In the third match I have the AMX 5100. Um, two of those three tanks I'm a fan of. <laughs> CDC, not so much, and I'll explain why later. But right now, Let's talk about the AMX 50B game. Because I'm basically a medium tank. I'm going to where the medium tanks should go. STB, I don't know what he's doing. But, uh... He's not gonna do much. <laughs> uh, going over here with his 254. And we're going to, hopefully, tear apart the enemy medium tanks that usually come up here. And then be able to get side shots on the enemies. Uh, at our leisure. When we do get up here, we do not spot any enemy mediums. Looking for shots on things. This E5 is going to be our first target. Because it's got .31 accuracy. When you miss, most of the time is your fault. I try and hit his hull because his turret was aimed at me and it was a really tiny shot. For that second, that shot, second shot that did miss definitely was my fault. I should have waited a half a second for him to turn his turret. Then I would have done 1200 damage to him instead of about 800. Anyways, you got the 22 or 23 almost second reload. And then you're ready to go. And yes, I realize I have all APCR loaded. But as because I was playing this tank in a tournament yesterday at kind of the enemy team. And uh, we got to switch out the ammo loadout. Uh, yeah, in the tournament, we won the, when we'd win the first match, the second match we ran like four autoloaders and then three 183s on a rock field. So, uh, <laughs> that was a fun game. Anyways, my T54 was way overly ambitious. And now, trying to find a shot, I realized I could shoot through those little boxes and I put one into the leopard prototype. But it wasn't enough to kill him. So, I'm trying to find a shot on anything else, anything useful. This E3, looks like he's going to oblige, put one shot into him, the prototype spotted again, try and snapshot, whizzed barely over his tank. So now I've got a reload, it would have been great to be able to kill him, but eh, what can you do? Should have waited another like tenth of a second, then fired. I'm gunning it, trying to close the distance before I get to him, so when I'm there, I'll be reloaded and just be able to pump one right into him right away. I am spotted though, and I find out it was by the Waffle Tractor, uh, right about now, there it is. So, I put one into his gun shield and set him on fire somehow, and then uh, he gets set on fire and dies because he didn't have a fire extinguisher, or it was not quick enough on the trigger. Anyways, this leopard's trying to play ring around the rosary with me, and I'm trying to get him to come at me, but he doesn't really want to. Worried about that E3 over there if I back up too much. I'm going to try and trick him out, and then juke back, and I get the ammo rack on him because it has got crazy weak ammo rack. Uh, still got a shell left, going to end up putting it in the IS-4. Because why not extra damage? And wait, there we go. There's the shot. Low plate, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Going for the E3 because I figured my team can deal with the IS4 in the 23 seconds it takes me to reload. Switching to HE because I'm coming up behind the E3. And that big old fat American ass is lovely for HE. I right, put one into him. I don't see how much damage I do though, and I guess I caught him on fire because he died before, or I put the, the second shell into him, and I ended up just damaging myself, and uh, had a shell left, I guess the team couldn't deal with the highest four, and so I ended up killing him for my fifth kill, 4800 damage, top gun, high caliber, Radley Walters, but I mean obviously I got a top gun because I got Radley Walters, it's kind of comes as part of the package. Anyways, top of the team, obviously. T95 did well. 
STB did, he pulled his weight kind of. T54 got way overly ambitious, and then the rest of the team kind of didn't do a whole lot besides bounce some shots. 15 shots fired, 12 hits, 12 penetrations. With <laughs> Especially when you've got all APCR loaded, you're not going to bounce a whole lot of shots with 340 pen. Yeah, I got to switch that to AP. <laughs> Anyways, did 1100 damage to the I, E3 in two shots because I did settle on fire and just burned them. And I got what, two fires and an ammo rack this round. So uh, RNG was definitely in my favor. Besides, uh, there's a couple iffy shots that I took that did not go in my favor. So, yeah, overall very successful round. In the 50 Bravo, got a pretty good amount of credits and experience. I guess not credits, I lost a lot, but I would have gotten a decent amount of credits. And now, got a platoon mate. Looks like he wasn't having very much fun in his SP1C earlier. Got one shotted by Borsig with HE. That's never fun. I always. Yeah. Taking HE by a 150 millimeter when you've got no armor is not ever a good time. But next tank I'm going to play is the Amex CDC because he picked tier 8. And here we go. It's actually the first game that you guys are seeing me play in the CDC, isn't it? Yeah, I don't do very well in it. I've only got about 1,700 average damage. My win rate's fine, because I'm usually playing it platooned. But my it's, it's not a good tank that you can do very well in, unless you really, really think things through. And like I said in my 5100 video, I'm far too aggressive for my own good. And it ends up not going in my favor quite often. Plus, this tank's just not very good in general, because the Dracula is based off the CDC. And the Dracula is a tier 7 medium tank, goes 65 kilometers an hour, right? CDC's, uh, tier, it's a tier 7 medium tank, sorry. The CDC's a tier 8 medium tank, so it's a tier higher. It goes 8 kilometers an hour slower, has the same amount of HP. They've both got 1250 HP. The CDC's got 1400 on PC. I don't know why Wargaming decided to nerf it, but it's a terrible idea. Because this thing, with the low amount of HP it has, and the fairly low rate of fire, you're not going to out DPM anything. I've got, like, not, I don't even have 10 rounds a minute, really. So, it's pretty bad. I do, however, have coded optics on it, so I can get some good spots. I tried to hit the pike, didn't work out. The team's doing their job though, and they're starting to put lead down range into the enemy tanks. Put one to the K-84. The team's gonna smack them even more. Look at that. We got like 280 some meters of B range on the CDC right now. And because I've got coded optics, I don't have to stay still which you really don't want to be staying still when you're in this tank because if you give the enemy team any opportunity to hit you at all you're probably going to get hit because you got a big old fat turret this isn't a small tank at all uh, it's way bigger than the Dracula actually so if you thought you are going to get just something about that same size you're wrong it's way bigger than the Dracula and it's only one ton heavier so yeah Dracula is just way better. If you have a Dracula, don't bother trying to get a CDC. Because it's just, tier for tier, Dracula is way, way better. With this, it's got over a 3 second reload too, which is also pretty bad. The things this tank has going for it is its power to weight ratio and its AP penetration. Because it's not even that fast, really. It's just got the power to weight ratio to keep up its top speed. But it's just 57. I mean, the FCM 50T and the 047 go 55. T54 goes 55. Like, the speed itself is nothing special. But the power to weight ratio is. So it's got power to weight ratio and AP penetration. That's really it. That's all it's got going for it. So, uh, you really have to have a specialized 
uh, play style and is saying if you want to do anything remotely good if you come across anything tier 7 medium tanks even you're probably just not going to out dpm them because you got the same amount of hp as like you got 50 more hp than like a kv13 the comet's got way more dpm than you you barely got more hp than that so they're just gonna they're just gonna rip you to shreds and you have a possibility of bouncing off of them and they really don't have a possibility of bouncing off of you um, cause it's got 30, 20, 20 on both the turret and the hull. So, yeah, literally every gun you sh see is gonna be able to overmatch the side of your armor. Like, the smallest gun you're really gonna see, the smallest gun on a tier 7 is a, I want to say it's probably the Comet or the E25, and they're like 75, 76 millimeters. But the 20 millimeters that you've got, is always going to get penetrated by anything like 61 millimeters and higher. So you just you cannot bounce shots at anything but your front if you're so lucky. Like maybe if they hit your gun mantlet, it might bounce, or maybe if you're super angled and hits your upper plate, it might bounce. That's really it. Um, the big old heavy tank guns are always going to overmatch your armor, so you can't bounce those. Really the only things we have even a chance to bounce would be light tank and medium tank guns. There's very low odds you're going to bounce anyways. Uh, yeah, and the DPM is super, is like almost a whole shot less per minute than uh, a lot of my other tier 8 medium tanks. But uh, the... 5100 here only had three shells in his drum ready and he missed one so he puts two into me and then I just get to kind of at my leisure slowly very slowly because I have the low DPM pick him apart my friendly 5100 missed and I'm gonna land him just so I can make sure I get the kill and uh I ended up doing what Let's see. 2,500, 26 damage. I got an ace tanker in patrol duty. Um, made 109,000 credits though. And I did almost as much spotting damage as I did actual damage. But the CDC, I guess, has three things going for it the power to weight ratio, the AP penetration, and then the credit coefficient. Because this thing makes credits like mad. If in like an average game where I do like 1700 damage I'm making 60 to 70 thousand credits easily because the ammo costs like 250 credits each and you got 212 penetration so if you hit them most of the time you're going to penetrate so it just makes credits like crazy fast it's if it wasn't such a bad tank tier for tier it would be an amazing credit grinder. It just needs a little bit of a buff in a few areas, and it'll be really good. Like HP, DPM, or gun handling instead of DPM. Like something about the gun besides the AP penetration has to be good, but it's not. So, uh, yeah, it's very difficult to do well in this tank. Very, very difficult. Anyways, last tank, the Croissant Original, the AMX 5100. Uh, yeah, it's it's a good tank. I like it. It's fun to drive. It's way better than the T69 because it's got that four shells and a decent magazine potential or drum potential or clip potential, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's got the good potential that the T69 just doesn't have. It does have the same reload between shell. I think the T69's got 3.33 also as the 5100. I'll have to find that out for sure though. Uh, anyways, trying to just talk to Carrot Panda, telling him. Yeah, we need something that can bounce shots. 
because if you're playing like an RU and then a CDC and a platoon doesn't go up, doesn't go very well because neither of them have armor. The CDC's got low penetration, and uh, you both got low HP, so it doesn't often work out very well for you or your team at all. Because I'm a heavy tank, I have to uh, spawn far farther away than I'd like to, so I'm not gonna be able to get up the hill like I would in a medium tank. But I am fast enough to get over into my favorite spot to go when I am not in a light or medium tank. And that's this little crevice over here or on the other side because when you got your heavy tanks. Oh, hold up. I gotta shoot this Type 62. I can back up. There we go. Put one into him. Put two into him. Now he's looking at me. Go for it. He bounced somehow. Bounced off him, so I guess I don't know how that happened, but whatever. Three and a half. Anyways, I like going into these little, I guess, notches that are safe from both the TDs camping in the back and the heavy tanks that are just on the other side of the hill. But it also does for the heavy tanks is it gives them more than one angle that fire is coming in. Like they have to angle towards the low and myself, and if you want the hill. Like you get medium tanks, or uh, like my platoon mate somehow got up there in this glacier. If you get people up there, there's three different angles they have to they have fire coming from, and it's impossible to angle towards all of them. So, if you have a tank here, tanks on top of the hill, and a tank where the low is, you're just gonna tear them apart because it's you they cannot stop all this incoming fire. You get something like a Mouse or an E100 where really you have to be able to definitely dictate. Uh, the angle of engagement to be successful, you can just shoot them on the sides of their turrets or track them in the open and then they're just boned. Anyways, the cap's getting kind of dangerously close, so I'm loading up the APCR and I'm going to go after him. So I'm going to get the cap, they can deal with the heavies, and looks like the Comet has the same idea as me, so he ended up resetting the cap, but I'm already over here so I might as well help him. And I'm going to shoot the Hellsinger once and then full speed run him. Then the Comet finishes him off. The uh, French heavies aren't bad at uh, ramming tanks to death at all. Especially the 5120 and the 50 Bravo because the well, 50 Bravo's got a uh, little seam on the, between the upper and lower plate. It's 250 millimeters thick. Like, it's crazy. So you're not going to penetrate it because it's like pretty much impossible. But it's also got that pike nose. And so it just really helps with the ramming. Uh, I was in a training room. I wanted to see just how much you could do with the ram in like the best possible circumstances. And uh, I had a leopard. We were on Rockfield and I went to one side of the hill in the middle. And to the other side, and we just ran, we went full speed down, rammed in the middle. I did 1202 damage to him, and that's insane. I also did it with a T57 heavy and did 401 damage to him, so it's definitely a very good ramming tank. So it can ram uh, medium tanks, uh, light tank destroyers. Like if you find a uh, ISU 152, actually, you can't, I no. Can't find those anymore unless there's fail platoon. If you have like a waffle tractor, a grill, uh, any medium tank really besides maybe the E50M, and then some of the lighter heavies like uh, if you catch a 5100 on the side, or uh, I don't know 51, a 50 Bravo on the side, or like a T57 heavy, you'll do a lot of damage with the ram, and it's really fun to do so. Anyways, this is M16's World of Tanks Blitz replays. Hope you enjoyed my video, and as always, have a nice day.